Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Hi, this is Ed Cohen. I'm in San Diego, California, and welcome again to Global TV Talk Show. This is a service of globalbusinessnews.net. I encourage you to go visit. You'll see a lot of very cool things and other links. Today is a very special show. I'm calling it California Bound with a question mark. We're also calling it Global 21. And what does that mean? This show is about recruitment and potential recruitment. And let's assume it's a success. Then we have a challenge of relocation successfully into the California market. Uh, We have an excellent cast here of experts, and I'm really honored to be the moderator. Um, So because everyone here has an A-type personality, you won't be hearing from me too much. I'll just coordinate. So first off, I want to introduce our our leader, Gary Sanger, who's from the LA metro region. I was introduced to Gary by uh, the esteemed CHRO, Paul Falcone, uh, who uh, many of us know from Paramount Pictures and, and other Hollywood type stuff. So uh, Gary Sanger, thanks very much for being our guest today. Uh, I do have your notes, um, but first of all, in your own words, uh, tell us about your executive recruitment firm in LA all these years, and now you're uh, uh, reaching out and expanding worldwide through your association. Please uh, tell our audience about that. Well, Ed, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Sanger, Sanger Associates is our retained executive search firm. I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was in the Air Force. I taught school and starved to death a couple of years and then got into my business career with um, American Hospital Supply Corporation. You would know those today as uh, Baxter and Cardinal Health. Had stints at Citibank and Security Pacific. You know, always been in HR, then in general management and founded Sanger Associates in 99. Yeah, and so, so your focus, search firm. Yeah, I was going Go to ahead. ask you uh, what level is your executive recruitment? Uh... Yep, thank you. We're a retained firm. We're that a proverbial headhunter who partners with corporations. You know, they have gaps in their middle management, senior management, and C level positions. Our industry focus is anything to do with manufacturing, supply chain, and engineering. The uh, Industries that we focus on include industrial products, aerospace and defense and consumer. So we are there trying to give these companies great choices when they are in fact trying to add to their senior management and executive team. So th- these people are not uh, lower level. These are this is high level stuff, right? Yeah, the typical search would be people in the 200 to 400 K range. We do them smaller and we do them bigger. But as we are trying to do this locally, regionally and nationally, I'm a proud member of 10 years with IRC Global Search Partners, where we have representation of other business owners like me in 45 countries and 90 cities. So we're truly doing a global search. We then are trying to help that typically a middle market company. They can be private, they can be public, but we're trying to help them have very difficult choices of finding great new executives for oftentimes very confidential searches. So Gary, I'd like to uh, play Mr. Networking here for a minute and uh, introduce- I heard you're pretty accomplished in that area. So I think (laughs) I'm talking to the master. Well, you know what? I learned from uh, people like Teresa and, and you know, people in, in the L.A. Hollywood scene like like Paul Falcone. Uh, but uh, but Helen Lobo and I were, were introduced by a mutual friend who happens to be based in Saudi Arabia. And uh, Helen uh, and uh, is an accomplished conference producer, much bigger than me. She just produced uh, Global HR Summit in Dubai, and I was really honored to be one of uh, several speakers on that program, and uh, we've uh, stayed in touch, so thank you, Helen. So Gary, as you could tell, is uh, the guy, the go-to guy, 
uh, and uh, Helen uh, knows uh, just, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Helen, but you seem to know <laughs> all the HR leaders and uh, throughout the Middle East. And Gary, so through your association of your international group, do you have inbound into the Middle East? Are you asking me if we do? Yeah. Yeah, I, in fact, our um, most recent conference when we were able to hold this was in Athens, Greece. We have an IRC global conference each year, our counterpart in Athens. You know, we cover, cover the Middle East, we cover Asia, we cover uh, Europe. You know, again, 45 countries. So yes, a global approach to it is how we have and we're able to deliver for our clients. Cool. Well, Helen, I'm going to connect you with Gary, or you can use the sure. chat, the chat underneath there, and send emails. All right. Of so, course. Uh, Thank you. Helen is a, a is an A-type personality, just like me, and she's going to reach out and invite you to be a speaker. <laughs> so, so get ready. Sure. Why not? <laughs> all right. So. Uh, so, Helen, I want to introduce you to Jeff Houck, who's uh, for many years was head of the talent mobility function for a large energy company in Canada called Suncor. Uh, mm -hmm. Gary, perhaps you know Suncor. So, Jeff, welcome again to uh, Global TV. Um, tell us about your search. I know you're in transition now. I can't hear you. Trying to be courteous here, not to make some static, and then you know you forget what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Good morning, guys. Um, thanks, Ed, for the intro. Um, yeah, yeah, packaged that's out. What I do. Uh, like um, like a lot of people in uh, in energy, um, just the kind of the way it's going now. Uh, have uh, really enjoyed reengaging uh, in the last uh, last six months for sure. Um, I'm, I'm energetic and I'm looking for uh, another role where I can go in and really uh, build and fix uh, that uh, operational and, and uh, global mobility component of an organization. Uh, there's just so many opportunities now that um, uh, things have changed in so many ways. And what's so exciting about it is, um, although it has, not been, it has not been a great way to do it, uh, but it's just been a wonderful impetus uh, for us to actually become more creative and actually be able to really move forward in some exciting ways. So um, I am looking forward to getting into an organization that actually um, either already understands uh, the value that a great mobility program does for that value and attraction component, you know, as far as the, the, whole, um, the whole employee experience, or I'd like to get into with a company that would like to understand uh, what it brings uh, so that you can bring some energy and a product and, and build something terrific and take advantage of, of this fresh energy that we've got going on now. So uh, Gary, uh, Helen uh, and Teresa uh, and you out there in the world, <laughs> uh, Jeff and I have had this conversation four or five times already at different uh, circumstances, different people on different programs that I was fortunate to produce. Uh, so Jeff is, um, if I may put some words into your mouth, he's a very successful uh, at executive level um, stakeholder in the talent, global talent pipeline development and where the mobility thing fits in in an effective way, not just um, moving boxes, mm -hmm. moving lives and creating value for the corporation through the hands-on approach, right, Jeff? Uh, pretty hands-on guy, um, and that's, that's the big thing. Uh, you, you've got to be, um, I, I think that um, where uh, I've had such success is really that people-centric piece. Um, it's, it's amazing to me that some of these people and some organizations are actually just realizing this now, um, that we have to be so people-centric um, to get uh, the best out of it. But, you know, in, in competing for this great talent that we have, um, it's uh, you've got to take care of them so that they can do their core business and, and deliver and, and actually be able to produce what uh, you've hired them to produce. They're not distracted and uh, they become just great ambassadors. Uh, uh, HR is kind of a hard gig to, to promote. People uh, doesn't always see it the right way, but <clears throat> when you go through a process and engage people uh, and have them believers, uh, it lets the business operation in a much higher level of functionality. 
So, so Gary, um, you know, um, making the deal work is one of your pet phrases, you know, ROI to the company uh, of getting the right people in the right place at the right time at the right price. And part of that is making sure the spouse gets taken care of uh, happy wife, happy life. And uh, even if I'm the trailing spouse, I got to be happy, you know? So, <laughs> So Teresa Howe is an expert. Uh, Teresa Howe and I met when I was publishing in the early days, California Bound Recruitment Relocation Guide uh, in cooperation with the LA Chamber of Commerce. And uh, this is a very long time ago. And um, that's when everybody wanted to move to California, of course. And so, so Teresa was a relocation director in a realtor situation, very specialized focus and handled literally thousands of hands-on moves. So Teresa, briefly do a better job than me. <laughs> so like Ed said, we've known each other since the beginning of time. And, um, you know, I came from the real estate side of it. I worked for a, a real estate company for years and years running the relocation program in a multi-state environment. And then like Jeff, I was escorted out with a package and that's okay, you know, it happens. And um, I started a consulting business in January. Now, you know, who knew COVID was gonna happen? So it wasn't exactly great timing, but now my focus is to work with real estate companies and relocation management companies to really help them um, kind of deliver better services, you know, better customer service, generate more revenue, you know, create more programs that, that kind of bring a robust offering to their operation. So that's what I've been doing in the last, since January. Yeah, great. So Helen Lobo, what do you think of all this conversation? Uh, well, for me, um, I think, um, first of all, thank you, Ed, for uh, inviting me to the show. And I, you know, for, especially when you mentioned that uh, you're going to be talking about the pain areas of global mobility in California, I said, you know, this is the place that I need to be because we are coming up with the Global Mobility Summit um, in Q1 of 2021. And uh, as you know, um, you know, the, we've never had a global mobility the summit in this part of the world. And we are more than happy to kind of be the first. Uh, and there's so much to learn from the community itself, because they are, in my opinion, from the time I've known, um, they're an unrecognized lot, although they do so much for the community. Um, and they're not recognized enough, um, you know. And uh, I think even for HR professionals, they don't even realize that there is a stream that they can get into, um, especially in times like these when, you know, uh, HR is uh, come to a saturation point in terms of recruitment, but they, they can always have an alternative, um, uh, um, you know, uh, job placement in global mobility because uh, in this part of the world, it's mostly outsourced rather than having an in-house professional handling um, global mobility. Um, and I'm just here to, uh, you know, learn from uh, experts uh, on the panel. So thank you so much for having me. Sure thing. So, so Gary, uh, California bound uh, people, um, how are companies going to meet the challenge of high tax California and the COVID? Uh, so Gary Sanger, give us your insight <laughs> about the difficulties and the opportunities connected with recruiting uh, the best people into California these days? I think it's a mindset that first of all, I like the idea, Kim, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Gary, how are you? I'm Hello, great. Kim, good to see thank you, you for coming. Hello. See, I re I'm reminded of uh, many years ago when I was in Chicago, coming from California via Denver. So I've been in California for a few years, been in Denver, now am in Chicago. And I desperately want out of there because wind chill factor is a real beast. And when you go 45 days in a row and it doesn't get above zero and body parts are falling off, you realize, <laughs> look, I've got to do something different. So I was open for an opportunity to be transferred and promoted back to, Chicago, back to uh, California. My wife and I had a beautiful home. We were pre-kids, we were pregnant with our first. And we then are on the phone with a relocation consultant couple that was helping us. 
And I described what we were looking for. And this was profound at the moment. I meant it to be silly, but it wasn't. As I'm describing what we're looking for, for dirt and house and location and commuting distance, the lady of the couple that was helping us relocation wise says, sir, I think you're a decimal off. <laughs> so instead of that 100 plus grand target, and this is a long time ago, you know, there were a million plus that they were looking at. So I think get the context about what a dollar will buy real estate wise. And then likewise, the trailing spouse, the trailing um, uh, person in this situation, and at least half the time, this is the trailing guy because the women executives that we're recruiting for our clients, what are their needs? And I think getting focused on what are their needs, they oftentimes could have a significant salary. You know, what are the kids' needs for education? And how then can you get the price of real estate, what the education meet needs might be for their family or even for themselves? You know, there's a big smorgasbord here in California in comparison to many other places. And now a word from our co-sponsors. You know, our programs wouldn't happen without the wonderful support of our advertisers. Here they are. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners, of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. This episode from the Meeting Room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org Porch Light Rental and Destination Services Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs Visit them at porchlightrental.com Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube Track your goods with our advanced GPS system Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by heirs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at heirs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. 
and by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Hi, my name is Christine. I'm a nurse from the Philippines and I got to know IAS through Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. And I want to thank IAS, especially to Matthew for helping me get my car um, stress-free, headache-free. And so I just want to show you the car that I got. It's a RAV4 XLE 2020. As an expat moving to the USA, relocating is exciting but it can also be stressful. Getting a car, truck, or SUV for personal transportation is usually a high priority. That's where International Auto Source comes in. We make getting the vehicle you want for your work assignment or academic program easy, so you're ready to drive when you arrive. Our product specialists have helped over 50,000 expatriates with their personal transportation needs, making us the largest international auto retailer in the world. International Auto Source gives you flexible payment options to buy, lease, or rent a vehicle from the world's leading auto brands, arrange financing on a purchase or lease without a U.S. credit history, social security number, or driving record, get full insurance coverage, and get approved easily through our low-rate factory-backed financing programs. And because we're an authorized distributor of the world's leading automotive brands, our no-haggle prices are competitive and the buying experience is hassle-free. We'll even guarantee your new vehicle will be ready the day you arrive. With over 20 years of experience in the global community, we are the vehicle experts for expats. We are International Auto Source. So do you think companies are uh, realistic? Well, they, with you as their counselor, and I'm sure they would be, but many don't uh, have the sense of uh, practicality. They have a strict budget or a strict routine. Uh, and yet they, so they're sort of hurt, hurting themselves with the recruitment angle, aren't they? Well, I think the big picture here has to get in focus. If you're hiring for a general manager and the job's gonna be three, four, 500 grand, and he or she's gonna run a business of a few hundred million. And you look at an ROI on that, and that person can give you a few extra points of return. Frankly, get out of your own way when you're worried about another 50 or 100 grand to make a relocation work. If you're trying to have that executive influence a half a billion dollars worth of business, and you get a few points on that, you know, the, the idea of whether another 50 or 100 grand in bonus or another 50 or 100 grand in compensation uh, or what it's going to take to have that person leave what they have now, you know, I just think the big picture in terms of the business needs are key to get focused on. And candidly, it's frustrating at times when you get HR types, and I was one for 25 years, they can't get out of their way to see the big picture and really see the business of the business. Let's welcome Kim Congdon. Welcome, uh, the Ahmed. Uh, we, we met uh, I, a long time ago at some meeting. And, uh, <laughs> and Who knows here, that <laughs> here, here we are. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're global VP of HR uh, and have a ton of responsibility. And you just came out of a board meeting. So um, welcome. Thank you for being you. there. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for the, the welcome. And uh, I think it's a great time to um, jump in after Gary's comment about HR types. Like, whoa, how, how, how quickly we go to the dark side, Gary. Uh, <laughs> in any case, um, obviously, I've known Gary for a long time. So um, all, in, all in good fun. 
but yeah, I'm, I've been with Herbalife um, for about uh, going on four years and it's a, a unique organization in that we are in 96 countries. And so I, I um, you know, I've done a lot of different things and it's my first time being in this type of industry. I have a lot of industry um, experience in technology and entertainment in companies like Time Warner Cable and a media tech startup, uh, full screen. Um, I was with Sony Pictures and also with a uh, technology company that eventually became Lucent for a number of years. So always been in HR, um, always been in companies that are focused on growth. Um, and that's kind of, you know, one of my interests is, is that you can't get that far without making sure that your talent is available and that you're developing and retaining them. So, you know, when, when you asked about this particular topic, even though I knew it would be a little tight for me, uh, given the day, um, I uh, was excited to be a part of it. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to introduce uh, our group here. Uh, Helen uh, Lovo is based in Bahrain, so it's a late evening there. Uh, she knows all the HR people across the Middle East. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we also have with us Teresa Howe, uh, who I met a, a long time ago when she was a relocation realtor in uh, West LA and has worked with many, many corporations helping recruit people. Perhaps you even did some work for Herbalife back then because they were right down the street on Sepulveda. I know, I think yeah. we did actually. Yeah, yeah, how about that? And uh, also from Canada, Jeff Hauk uh, is in transition right now. He's uh, been uh, with a, a very large integrated oil company, energy company called Suncor, in, now is Cal in, in Calgary. And he's in transition and he has scads of experience in being uh, in the boardroom and uh, better enabling recruitment and the movement of talent across Suncor's scope. Jeff, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, Global Mobility, we're in, uh, uh, again, global company, integrated energy company. So our, our talent management um, from intake to output for new and, uh, uh, of course, uh, talent growth as well. Yeah. Kim, are, are you uh, in the, the Middle East, in UAE, Dubai, Bahrain area? Uh, we, we are. We are. Primarily, though, not, not, um, not from an employee standpoint, from a distributor standpoint. Um, our primary, uh, there, yeah, so our primary group over in the Middle East um, is a little further towards Africa. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so Helen, are, are you familiar with Herbalife? No. Okay. It's a nutrition company. I'm going to look them up now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's a nutrition company, right? Do you, do you actually make the stuff or, or do you do. just sell yeah. it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. One of, one of the things that I, I like um, about the company is that it is a manufacturing has a large manufacturing base, uh, a large R&D base, so that it isn't just, um, you know, relabeling and uh, remarketing something. Um, we're about a five and a half billion dollar company, and we're actually 40 years old, um, but I wouldn't necessarily expect you to have a lot of uh, experience with them because it's not a major market for us yet. Um, but yeah, it is, it's, it's a nutrition company. It started off specifically as more of a weight loss company. And then it really shifted to more of a, you know, specialized nutrition um, and exercise as well. Um, and, and we are a multi-level marketing company. And so um, get slammed a lot with being a pyramid scheme and, and that kind of thing. And I was really, just to be perfectly honest, I was really nervous when I interviewed. I was like, oh, I'm not going to talk to those people, those, you know, pyramid scheme people. Most ethical, highly integrity. I mean, just great from that perspective. Um, but it is different because your sales and marketing force 
they're not your employees. So we don't sell anything. Our distributors sell everything. Um, so that was, a, um, from an HR standpoint, you know, it's been a different, um, a different challenge as well, right? Because um, trying to, over the last four years, really getting the company to focus more on the needs of employees, because it really had only been focused on the distributors and getting them to understand that connection of um, developing uh, talent internally and being able to recruit the best if people aren't gonna have the autonomy and those kinds of pieces. And I feel really excited about the kind of where we are now, just four years later, um, in terms of the level of investment, the um, digital uh, transformation that we've made in human resources, and just the understanding of the connection to the business. So the, the, the mobility person that's not with us you know, today, what, what does that person do for you? Well, who uh, typically would be relocated within this kind of a structure? Oh, yeah, we actually do um, a fair amount of relocation. Um, well, first of all, just from a hiring standpoint, although we're really not doing that currently with the pandemic. Um, but uh, so certainly from a recruitment standpoint, you know, it could be people from uh, within the United States or from other countries or and so his role is global. So it could be, you know, from Bahrain to the UK, for example, for a hire. Um, and then internally, we do a fair amount of uh, moves within the company from our regions. So corporate is the US is corporate, uh, but to provide new opportunities for some of our regional stars within the corporate function, and also for some of our corporate high potential people to be out in the regions, which is, you know, they're focused on the sales and the operations um, to kind of round people out. So yeah. it can be uh, typically, if it's going to be international, it's going to be obviously at least a VP level, but internally, you know, within the, the U.S., it could be all different levels. So Gary Sanger, um, in the executive recruitment level, uh, from what you've seen here in this program, uh, and applying it to today's world uh, and bringing people into California, um, relevant to the old days <laughs> when it was easy pickings. And so how do you think economic development angle of uh, the community seeking to attract new tax revenue and to build up employment within the area to help the community. I know you're involved in economic development. Could you give us your focus from that point of view and the world that California is facing this coming year uh, with high taxes and assuming that the vaccine works and the lockdowns open up? You know, one perspective, and thank you for that question. Before the pandemic, we routinely had our final candidates, <clears throat> pardon me, get five, six, seven other offers. So the demand was huge. The offers were multiple. And since the pandemic, we first of all, not lost any searches. We routinely get the final candidate having basically only our offer, maybe one or two others at the most. But the economic development part of it, I live out here in a community that's 30, 40 miles north of LAX. And Santa Clarita is a community of three, 400,000 people. We have an economic development corporation where I'm an investor on that for the last half a dozen years. And I pay a pretty substantial amount to be an investor and a board member of that. And we're looking to keep our companies and we're looking to attract companies. We're very business friendly. We are very um, open arms to partner with companies. And if in fact they're building, you know, shortcut that and streamline that. We have a great employee base here for people to work for their companies. Many of them are working down into San Fernando Valley or working into LA or God forbid drive all the way down to the west side or into uh, Orange County. So the commute part of it 
is something that we solve, but we have a great brand. And I think those communities that really wanna reach out and be friendly to community, to companies to, to be attracted there, that's the opportunity. That's one part that I'm disappointed with California on overall, quite frankly. You know, we're not a very friendly business state. However, you know, today when we're going to be in the 80s and my friends in the Midwest are uh, sitting there with blizzards, so I get that 100 degree temperature difference. We have a huge amount of resources with universities, with other employers, with the employee base. You know, the technology piece of it is probably second to none. What are we, the seventh or eighth largest uh, economic uh, environment in the world in terms of California. So all that said, the economic focus for communities, reach out and be friendly, reach out and help companies, because God knows we certainly have neighboring states out there that are trying to pick off from us. Yeah. So Jeff Houck, I know you have an appointment coming up, so I thank you for being on our program. Um, I can't hear you. Uh, put your speaker on, please. So I just I just dealt with it. So I'm going to hang around with you guys for a minute. Oh, good. So do you have any interest to relocate to California? <laughs> My grandmother lived in California for about 15 years, just north of you up in uh, uh, La Costa there, Ed. Nice oh, place yeah. To be. yeah, if you play golf, it's great. Yeah. Great place to golf. Yeah. So, so, um, Gary, you're, you're in Santa Clarita, which is by Six Flags uh, and out near uh, Ronald Reagan's uh, area, uh, the, the great museum out there. And um, uh, so when you guys recruit people into your market, and I know you have a large business park there, um, do, do people live uh, north over the grapevine or is it all um, in the San Fernando Valley area? Well, there's a big variety. There's a big variety. You know, within an hour commute, you've probably got <clears throat> 20 communities. You can go toward Pasadena, you'd be in San Fernando Valley, you can go to Simi, go toward Ventura, and also go towards Bakersfield. There's, there's a, a variety of real estate, of schools, of what you could choose. Yeah, you know, and, people from uh, not from Southern California, they have no idea how big the area is. Right. It's, it's just hard to comprehend. Well, I'm just saying that if somebody is in the Midwest or in the Southeast and they're looking for what they want, you know, first of all, we're probably an A or double A cost of living. They're typically coming from a B or a C. So 100 grand there is 150 grand here. Normalize what it is and what the real estate would be. But I think the opportunity then in terms of what they can do in five to 10 years, you know, that's the attractiveness. What, what's the business issue that your company is trying to solve? And how can you, the executive who might be in another part of the country, solve that? COVID has prompted most of our clients who most are essential businesses to say, look, We'll give you six to 12 months to figure this out. You can commute, you can uh, work virtually, you don't have to move overnight. But uh, you know that's the flexibility that they're doing. Many of our hires are getting hired virtually without getting on a plane and coming here. That's the flexibility of our great clients to be able to do this. So Kim, in the early days, um, or earlier days, I should say, when, when you're involved in more Hollywood-oriented uh, firms, uh, Time Warner in the early days, uh, did they have a Zoom kind of a thing, a teleconference kind of a screen set up at that time? I'm sure they did, but it wasn't broadly used. And to what extent were interviews done using, in the early days, the teleconference idea? Yeah, yeah. So um, very, you're right. Very few people had a really nice, set up. It just so happened that since my boss was in Charlotte, that I was one of those ones that, that had it. So I used it for interviewing because I had access, but it definitely was not widely used. And because we were a cable company, we did use it a lot for all employee meetings um, because we had our own channel. 
Um, so that, that was great. We did, you know, and, and that was so unusual at, at that time. Um, but the thing, the thing is that I only used that because it was very high definition, like Zoom is today. You know, that whole thing of whatever it was, like with Skype, with all the strange looking people and your <laughs> voice reverberating and all of that. I never, I, I tried not to use that unless it's absolutely necessary because I think you do a disservice to the candidate because you can't, your, your brain can't divorce itself from how they're coming across to you. So if, you know, I think when you do use it, you just need to make sure that the quality is there. Otherwise um, you're kind of taking a step back instead of forward. So, Part of your earlier experience, uh, I don't know how much you want to get into this, was with the Academy Awards and, you know, Hollywood stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that uh, was, uh, I mean, the people at the time are different from the people involved in the media business now. Uh, I'm very aware of that. Of course, the generational gap, but everybody now is so tech oriented. And back then it was like weirdo. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, from from my view, it was like strange. You know, if you can't do things in person, shake hands, look uh, your customer or your report in the eye, then you have no relationship at all. So it, everybody's grown. But what do you see coming up now in the new year? I would think that with uh, the new stimulus program that's going to come in one form or another, something's coming. That's for sure. Uh, people are going to want to regroup or reskill, upskill, learn more about technology. To to what extent are you thinking of the tech applications to your um, your business life now in Herbalife? That is absolutely um, a great point. And yeah, you know, so I was with the academy from 2012 to 2000 and. 16 or 17, 17, I think I was there five years. Um, and yeah, the film business is very, very much in person. And I'm curious, I, I'm uh, you know, wondering how that will change will be really interesting because then when I went to a media tech company, like it is all on a tech platform, but at Herbalife this past year, we kicked off a huge global project um, that is specifically around operational trans, uh, operational efficiencies, and with no no small small, small surprise, the primary uh, focus is digital transformation, and really um, in almost every business, the last group to transform digitally, and this is you know out there in Sherm or whatever, um, is human resources. And my own personal experience, it's because it's hard to get that level of in human resources. But also some of it is that, you know, some HR people um, are not necessarily comfortable with technology because we are people people. We uh, hopefully, well, hopefully we like people or we shouldn't be in the business, but if I may, uh, um, Kim, I, 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 I wanted just to mention that I get the Really, I think to, in order to remain relevant There seems to be um, a technical, yeah. you know, technical glitches here. Um, Kim, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Jeff Halk wanted to ask you a question. I, I, okay. I, I wanted to comment actually, Kim, um, part of our transition um, in our HR um, and our, our HR at Suncor was about 400 people. So it was a fairly significant HR function. So I think that um, that allows when we were going through the digitalization of it, uh, which, is, which is never ending. Um, I think some of the HR functions may not have the opportunity to, to leverage their, their scale. And so when you've got scale, um, you've, you've got the ability to really drive it as a program across the board. And I think that's really one of the struggling points for smaller organizations, simply because they don't have this on mass approach. But the one thing that we did find is that 
in design um, with that big, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to engage as far as that stakeholder, you really learn right across the organization who the stakeholders are in HR and what they're bringing. But I think to your point, and I'd like you to comment on this, is that you know, HR is people and, and we understand that. But what I think the great outcome is, is that when you're going down this digitalization journey, is that when you are growing the efficiencies through that digitalization, and you realize that it's going to allow you to be more engaged as a people person and free up that time, that's where the win is, but it takes a while to get there because getting through where it's fluid is, um, is, is a little bit bumpy for sure. Kim? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's absolutely true, Jeff. Um, it's so much of it is change management, um, you know, one of the things about digital transformation that that's very evident at Herbalife is that we've had decades of putting process on top of process. And then if you want in, in HR, other every place else as well, but specifically since we're talking about HR, um, and I am just, you know, 100% focused on, look, we've gotten this opportunity to invest. I'm not spending a dime of it until we're sure that we're not going to take these. Hmm, I'm trying not to use a bad word, really, because these processes are driving me crazy. Um, these not strong processes and just digitizing them because then we are not in any way maximizing it. And you're absolutely right. There's some people in the organization that are that are really resistant. They are very comfortable with you know sending out an email about open enrollment instead of having a interactive link on our global um, homepage, right? And yeah. um, those kinds of things. Um, and we are hoping that we can bring them along. But, you know, honestly, the truth is that some people we're not going to be able to bring along. And then they're no longer the right fit for, for at least our human resources organization. So um, because we can't yeah. serve our employees. Without so, that digitization. So Gary, and, and then I want to go to Teresa and also Helen. So Gary saying uh, the attraction thing again, that's zero in on getting people to choose uh, LA as opposed to Austin. Uh, so let me tell you a quick story, an example. We've been very busy this year. We've been very blessed. We've been very steady in terms of searches and a couple of our largest clients because they're strong, because they are in big demand now, they are growing. They are focusing on five, 10, 15 years from now in terms of their senior management and their executive team. So they're succession planning now, and we have a handful of searches with them, all of these in the 200,000 to 500,000 levels. So they're uh, you know, senior management and executive levels. Their geographic focus for these searches is Southern California, is Arizona, with a lot of manufacturing operations in Mexico. So many of our candidates then, as they're looking at career potential with this client, and again, I've been doing work with this client from before I founded Sanger Associates, which is 1999. They then are looking at candidates who would consider California, who would consider Arizona, and don't have any fear in operating in, uh, in uh, Mexico. Now, they take a five times monthly salary as a starter in terms of what the relocate, relocation package is going to look like. So it's not for the faint of heart when it comes to relocation. They also really consider what the geographic choices are going to be with price of real estate, the closer to the beach, the higher the price. You look at the distances, you look at their kids in terms of their educational needs. You know, they are ponying up what it is to make these, um, make these searches work, to make these searches happen. So I would tell you succession planning now, if you are tired of that B minus and C and C minus em employee you've had, Now's the time to go hunt. Now's the time to go upgrade. And I think if you're looking 5, 10, 15 years from now, 
you know, that's the kind of problem that our corporate clients want to fix. And the California piece, if somebody truly is most concerned about their career, we'll overcome that. We'll fix this. We work with people like Kim that have the business in mind. You can put a package together. You deal with what the issues are that that company's trying to fix, and this candidate can improve that. They can give you an ROI that gives you multiple returns on that. Gary, is it okay for people on the program and out there in the world, can they reach out to you? Please do. Please do. And, and I want to make a, an announcement here. We haven't got the press release out yet, but in the interest of growth, in the interest of the future of Sanger Associates, I've agreed to merge with and be acquired by 2024 site. They're a fellow member of our IRC Global Search Partner team. I have a five-year contract with them. We're going to be hiring and growing this manufacturing vertical in terms of search. And if they want to reach out to me, uh, gsanger at sangerassociates.com. Our website is sangerassociates.com. I'd love to have uh, folks reach out and guys like Jeff that are looking for their next job. You know, my counterpart in Canada, you know, we do a great job with uh, working with people with, like you as well. So it would be a pleasure. Happy to hear that. Teresa Howe, you've heard all this talk about very wonderful talk about reaching out for that right person, get that person to reload. So what can you add to that value? So, you know, I've been working in California for 30 years, but, but I also managed Arizona and Texas. And, you know, like you said, Ed, it used to be much easier to get those families to come to California, but I remember when I started working in Texas and Arizona, managing those areas, I thought, oh my gosh, this is so easy. People just come. They don't argue about their salary. They don't, you know, and, and it just was shocking to me. And, and when, when I looked at the stuff that I managed in those two states on the referrals that came in, either from relocation management companies or directly from corporations, we had about over a 50% conversion rate. So it means every time an agent would take a client out, like, you know, one out of two, we're going to come and buy a house. And so, you know, but in California, we never probably had a better than a 25% conversion rate. So that meant every agent, every relocation agent that we worked with would take four people out and only one would actually come. And, and you know, that's been that way for probably, I don't know, almost probably 15 years. And, and you know, I think it all comes down to, and it has nothing, it's all about all those things that, that you all have all already talked about. You know, it's the cost of living. So one of the things that we would work with our agents with a lot, and I still encourage um, relocation companies to do that, relocation management companies, when they're consulting um, a potential transferee, they don't know California. They don't know the market. So you have to depend on the local brokerage to, to, to really be the experts. And so what we've trained our relocation agents to do is you have to sell lifestyle, 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 lifestyle. You have to talk about all the fun stuff there is to do, the weather, as Gary Apley put, Texas and Arizona, not so fun in the summer and the winter in Texas, you know? And so, you know, we always focused heavily on selling lifestyle. And, and you know, it, it's not always easy for a family of five or six to come to California, depending on where they're coming from, because they're downsizing significantly. So, you know, even if they're living up in, in and, you know, even if they're willing to commute, even if they're in Santa Clarita or Orange County or, you know, it, it's San Bernardino, it's still either a rough commute if they have to be physically in an office, you know, or they're going to be paying a big price. So, you know, I think what we had to do was we depend very heavily on the agents. And this also goes back to the technology thing that you guys were just talking about, is that, you know, the agents now are dealing with families that are considering coming here but they're not able to visit. So they're doing virtual tours of homes. They're driving through neighborhoods and showing you know, images of the neighborhood. And, and they're using the technology in a way that they should have been using all along because the technology has existed for five to seven years. Digital signings, virtual showings, you know, um, 
videos of every home. You know, you should you should be able to go onto a real estate website and see a video of every single home listed. But it's still not that way, and it's just because. Don't you think that um, a part of the takeaway? You're talking about ratios here. Of uh, you're at a 25 percent achievement, and Kim, I want to bring you into this because it's going to make sense to you. One of the big things I think that we need to get better and have worked on significantly in HR, um, and this is where we have the opportunity in developing tools to do, is I think if you've got you know only <clears throat> one quarter of the people that are conversion, as you're saying, um, that means 75% have not been vetted correctly. And I think that we really have to work on this so that we're understanding who we're dealing with, what they are. And to your point, Gary, if this person's never gonna wanna be in California, you can try as hard as you want, they're not going. So I think we have to really step back. And before we start selling the product we have to sell, we have to see if someone's interested in looking at the product and being part of it. And if we could grow our efficiency in that, think how much time we'd all save. 75% of your time, Teresa, would be freed up. Everyone else, you're working with the right person. And I think that that's what we have to really get ahead of. So it's, it's not just the technical piece, it's really in front of it. And, and that has to do, that's the whole piece around talent management. You just have to get- It's so true. And I think the challenge is, is that the corporation doesn't know often the California market or, or the California real estate market, at least, let's face it, obviously. And, and, and nor does the relocation management company because you're dealing with consultants that work all over the United States. They can't know a market specifically. So the problem is, and to your point, Jeff, they start in the funnel, and then by the time they get to the real estate agent, you know, it's just a waste of everyone's time. It, it should, it should be, they should be vetted earlier on because when you're talking about coming from, you know, the Midwest, they have a big house, every kid has a bedroom, a big yard, and, and unless whoever is job is taking this job is willing to commute a significant or have $2 million you're not gonna get a house like that. So, you know, the challenge is, is I think everybody just kind of crosses their fingers. And then when it gets down to the realtor, the realtor's like, oh yeah, this, this, is, this is rough. This is not gonna work for these people. So it's a bad And a lot story. of time has been wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it should be a yeah. good news story and it's not. Yeah, so, right. So Gary, yeah. What, what you're hearing is that the relocation aspect uh, should move up the food chain into recruitment. We have a term in my we have a term in my business, and it's I violently agree. <laughs> and if in fact I've got a heart issue, I don't go to my GP. If I've got a couple that's considering something in California or other places, get my super expert relocation <laughs> consultant who has people on the ground there that can talk about it. Like Jeff says, vet them out early. So they don't waste a trip. Many of them just want the trip to go see it and go, uh, to, go Disneyland. to Disneyland. But right. you know, use that expert early on and vet them out. There's no way it should be one out of four. You know, if you're not getting four out of five, you're not doing your good work up front. So Helen Lovo from uh, the Middle East, uh, what do you think of all this California talk? I uh, can't hear you. Put put your speaker on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I think um, I'm just making notes because I know these are pain points which, which we could address in the summit. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be touching base with um, all of our panelists to get some more input uh, to make that content of our summit more richer and uh, addressing uh, pain areas more, uh, you know, uh, so that... Uh, the audience, um, the global audience can learn from each other um, and then take it forward. So I'm making plenty of notes and I would love to get in touch with every single one of them. So um, in past conversations, we've learned that uh, mobility and talent mobility, that kind of thing across the Middle East is not popular. It's not. It's uh, generally outsourced. Um, it's not an in-house function for the most part, except uh, for large organizations they do have, but uh, those are few and far between. Right. Okay. So uh, 
I look forward to uh, helping you with that. And um, sure. I, th I thank you for being on this program. Gary Sanger, where do we go from here? How do we, how do you recommend that we talk to, or if we want to communicate with local chambers of commerce that we're plugged into or um, recruit, uh, not recruiters, because that's all your thing, but the idea of bringing companies and site selection, if you will, to expand an operation to where the people live to avoid some of the commutation problems in Southern California? Well, candidly, I don't think the chamber is the answer. They represent very small businesses oftentimes. I think the fellow economic development corporations that are out there, you know, make an awful lot of sense. I'd be delighted to, you know, host anyone to talk about that. We get fellow EDCs that are out there to, uh, to discuss that. The, uh, the talent and what you need to run your business today, five years, 10 years. Candidly, the great executives have more of a concern about that company, its growth, its people, and what it wants to do than what they do about the specific geography. And so I think as you're talking about transparency of the business, how well capitalized, what's the growth look like? You know, California becomes like a third or fourth level of problem you're dealing with rather than many folks, I think, deal with that as number one. So again, I would be delighted to have any of those conversations. Jeff, I'd like to introduce you to my counterpart in IRC in Canada. I would like you to learn the word they instead of we, because I understand you're gone from your former company. And so you're looking as to uh, where you're gonna go next. That'd be terrific, Gary, I appreciate that. Well, uh, this has been a, a wonderful experience for me as the producer and the host, uh, broadcast host, uh, Paul is a producer. We've had a, a delightful time here today and highly educational. Gary, thanks so much for taking the lead. Um, Kim, please come back sometime and I welcome your mobility uh, manager. Uh, Jeff, uh, good fortune to you. You take care, an LA Dodger guy, huh? Get <laughs> You know, the, the Padres did a good job trying to beat them, but they just don't have the depth yet. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy that Dave Roberts has worked out for you guys. I'm not so unhappy depth, either about our Lakers. It's pretty darn nice. And uh, yeah. frankly, you know, many other places of the country doesn't have this kind of Dodger Laker land. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Teresa, for coming back. Thank on. you so much. Thank you, Helen. Uh, You're welcome. Signing off from here. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Please come nice back. Nice to you, Ed. Yeah. yeah, thanks for pulling us together. It was so great to see you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe.